Hey everyone, Tom here. Today we're working on another project. We are replacing our RV shocks. And I thought I would take you along with the project, show you how to replace your RV shocks, and talk a little bit about pros and cons, why you actually have shocks on RV trailers. This is for a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. So we're replacing our RV shocks because we had one shock that came apart while we were traveling. The nuts came off it and it get, got loose and it, it bounced around and got damaged and the threads got so damaged that I couldn't actually install it back in there. So we decided to replace all of our RV shocks instead of just one. Now we are in a fifth wheel RV and a lot of times in especially lighter weight fifth wheels and travel trailers, the trailers don't even come with shocks on them. But shocks help immensely in how the trailer handles going down the road. Shock absorbers, contrary to the name, don't really absorb the shock. What they do is they dampen it. When your wheel hits a bump, the wheel will move on the spring and absorb the shock. The spring is actually what's absorbing the shock. But if there isn't a shock absorber, uh, or really it, more of a shock dampener installed, what's gonna happen is the wheel is gonna continue to move and the trailer is going to bounce. The trailer or car, if you don't have shocks, it's going to bounce down the road and it's not gonna settle out. So the shocks are very difficult to move. If I press down on this, you'll, you'll see that it moves very slowly. And what what that's going to do is it's going to stop the wheel from bouncing. If the, once the spring bounces up, it's going to settle back down to its normal position instead of going further and continuing to bounce. This also helps in cornering. As the RV rolls to one side, it could roll back and go too far and sway back and forth. The shock absorbers are going to help with that as well. We had to run for a while with one shock absorber missing on our trailer and it was noticeable the difference in quality with just just one missing. So without any on the RV, you're gonna see a considerable ride difference if you add shocks to your RV. If you have shocks on your trailer already, you're gonna be able to tell if they're bad, probably because the ride quality is gonna seriously decrease in your trailer. We actually noticed that things were thrown around our trailer more with just one missing even. So you're gonna notice that first. Second, you might actually see some of them leaking. These are filled with oil, and if the seals blow out, they might actually leak oil out, and you're gonna clearly see that they've failed in that case. The last way you could tell they failed is if you actually remove them, you'll see that the ones that are going bad are gonna move a lot easier than a new shock. This one you'll see will compress very quickly, whereas this one, it moves very slowly. And uh, same in reverse. They're really supposed to move back and forth really stiff. And that's what you want in a good shock absorber. A bad shock absorber is gonna move very quickly, and sometimes it's only gonna move bad in like one spot where the trailer sits most of the time and the wheel goes up and down just a little tiny bit. So you kinda of have to push it up and down and see if it moves nice and smooth through the entire range of motion. This shock isn't really that bad, but it is definitely worn out compared to the new shocks that we got. This style you'll see stays compressed when I compress it all the way. This is not a gas charged shock, whereas this one when I compress press it, it starts to, it squeezes back out to its full length again. So if your trailer already has shocks, just replacing them to new ones is actually really easy. They just have a couple rubber bushings and some uh, pieces of metal that squeeze them together and two nuts on either end. All you have to do is take apart the nuts on either end, take the old shock off and put the new one on. Now when you're actually looking to get new shocks, you um, there's a handful of different lengths that you can get for your trailer. And uh, to figure out what the right one is for your trailer, what you're going to want to do is measure from stop to stop, they call it. This is the top stop on the shock and the bottom stop is right here. And you're going to measure that distance when the trailer is perfectly neutral, level with the weight on it. If your trailer doesn't have shocks and you want to add them, it's usually pretty easy. Most trailers have uh, an extra hole on the bottom of the plate that actually connects to the, um, the springs. If it doesn't, you can get kits. And what you're going to do is you're going to take off this entire plate on the bottom and put a new one on that has a hole for the shock on the bottom. Then you're going to have to weld a tab on the top here, um, right here, if there isn't one already, to the frame or the equalizer so that the shock can actually connect to it at the top and has something to push against. These kits are readily available. Uh, I'll put a link to a couple in the description below. And um, it's, it's definitely a worthwhile thing if your trailer doesn't have shocks to add them. 
You can almost always tell a trailer that's missing shocks going down the road because it bounces a lot. Ones with the shocks kind of float down the road a lot better. So we are replacing the shocks with the tires off and you do not have to do that. We have the tires off because we're actually rotating our tires right now and it's convenience. It's a little bit easier to get the shocks, but you don't have to do that. You can crawl underneath and take apart these bolts. And if it's a gas charge shock, you're going to have to compress it down to actually get it to come off. Otherwise you can just push it down and it'll pop right out of the holes and you can take it out. You're not touching the suspension. Again, these are not actually putting any pressure on the ground. All if you take anything apart, there's not going to be any spring pressure on it so they'll just come apart nice and clean. All right, so I'll replace this shock with you. It's pretty straightforward. I've just got the right sized. That's not gonna fit. <laughs> I've got the, uh, the right sized tool here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the nuts on either end of um, these, these shock absorbers. And uh, these are, are stud type shocks. They just have a stud. Most cars actually have a bushing. It's a round bushing and it slides onto a post. Those can be actually a little bit easier to install. Uh, motor homes, you'll typically see the bushing type, but on a trailer, usually it's a stud type shock. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove the nut here. And the shock itself is the other end, is the other end of the nut. So you're actually gonna spin the shock itself. And you'll see that the top and the bottom of the shock actually rotate separately. So you can just spin this top part to loosen that nut. All right, in my case, this is a 14 millimeter nut. Now this just pops off like so. I'm just gonna compress the shock. And now I'm gonna do the same on the bottom here. You've got another, uh, another nut down on the bottom portion of the shock. I'm actually gonna extend the shock on the outside of its mount here so that I can get my hand on the shock itself and twist, twist it so I can get this nut. All right, so I just ran into a little bit of pickle removing the old shock. The nut is too tight and I can't actually hold the shock in place to uh, get it to spin. It's, uh, it's probably rusted on there. So if that happens to you, what you're gonna notice is that the end of the shock has this little flat thing around the outside there. And what that's designed for is that you can put a wrench on there and I've got a lock wrench in this case and squeeze it nice and tight, and then I can use my box wrench over top of that, and I can turn against this wrench. So that's how I'm gonna be able to break that nut loose while on there. So first I'm gonna install my box wrench here, and then clip my locking wrench onto that, and now I can turn this nut against this wrench instead of the shock. Now, if you end up having to use this method to get the uh, get the nut off your shock, uh, just make sure that your wrench is on the flat part only and not on these threads. If it gets on these threads, you're gonna bugger up the threads and then you're gonna have a really hard time getting that nut off or a new nut on the shock if you're gonna replace, re put it back on. I'm just going to compress the shock enough so that I can just pull it out. Now these rubber mounts can be a little metal sometimes and the old shock is out now we are going to take the new shock and um, you take one of these rubber mounts and you install the metal mount the metal uh, holder and then the rubber mount and then it's going to be inserted into the appropriate hole install another metal holder and a rubber mount and press the shock so that you can install it into the top position. Oh, it won't go. So we had a little trouble. Our back, uh, our back axle is held up by a jack right now, and the jack had dropped a bit, and the uh, the equalizer pivoted a little bit, which moved this axle up so far that I couldn't actually get the shock on. So we had to jack that side back up. If you're on really uneven terrain, you may have trouble getting the shocks compressed enough to get them in. You may have to actually jack up or jack down or move the trailer to a different terrain. Best to be on level terrain when doing this job, but we were able to just jack that up enough so that I can get the shock compressed and get it into its appropriate position. You can see the gas charge 
pushing it back up into place. Now just take your nuts Go ahead and get the shock squeezed back down. Again, if you have trouble getting the shock to spin or it's too tight, you can put a wrench on the end and use that to help you get it tight. Um, you're gonna wanna squeeze these so that they have a bit of compression on them. That's actually what's gonna hold this nut in place. And those rubber beats are also kinda like end stop and help provide a little bit more dampening uh, for the trailer itself. So after you get that tight, you just go ahead and do the same with the bottom and that's it. You're done. You've replaced your shocks or installed them if you're putting new ones on your trailer. You're going to ride down the road better. You're going to have uh, things aren't going to fly around in your trailer so much and it's going to be safer as well because you're not going to roll around so much. So uh, shocks are definitely a great thing to have on your trailer. All right, that's it. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. <laughs>